Hi there! My name is Tiffany and I will be guiding you through this lab procedures to try and help you get accurate results to prove the purpose of this lab. Let's go over a few definitions. Titration is the process of determining the concentration of a known solution by adding a measured unknown concentration until the reaction is neutralized. Standard solution, a solution containing a precisely known concentration of a substance. The objective is to determine the acetic acid concentration in a vinegar solution from an unknown acid concentration from titration. Now, before we start this experiment, let's go over a few safety rules. Wear an apron, gloves, closed toed shoes, and goggles. Here are the materials you'll be using throughout the experiment. A ring stand with a clamp, a white tile, a barrette, a funnel, graduated cylinders, a stirring rod, a 150 milliliter and 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a 150 milliliter and a 400 milliliter beaker, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydrogen thylate, phenothylene, vinegar, and a waste bucket. The first and foremost place to start is cleaning your 50 milliliter barrette. If the barrette is not clean, this will lead to some errors in your results due to inaccurate measurements that will determine the concentration. Fill your barrette, which is held vertically, with about 10 milliliters of deionized water with the stock hog on the barrette closed. Carefully rotate the barrette so that the deionized water is rinsed throughout the entire inner surface. Check for any leaks or water droplet remains on the inner surface before draining the water away. You should repeat the step about two or three more times. The stock hog should be closed when finished. Before you make the sodium hydroxide solution, you need to understand why you are standardizing it. Sodium hydroxide is not pure as it absorbs moisture from its surroundings, therefore making it hydroscopic. That is why the sodium hydroxide solution you will be preparing is not exactly 0.6 molarity, but maybe higher or lower than 0.6 molarity. Now to make the sodium hydroxide solution. After measuring about 6 grams of sodium hydroxide, start by dissolving the sodium hydroxide in deionized water to make 250 milliliters of 0.6 molarity sodium hydroxide solution. It says to use a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, but I would recommend a 250 milliliter beaker in order to stir the solution with a stirring rod. Since sodium hydroxide is hydroscopic, make sure to replace the lid on the sodium hydroxide container after using it, otherwise it will liquefy. After the solution dissolved, slowly pour about 5 to 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution into a funnel above the barrette. Carefully rotate the barrette so that the sodium hydroxide is rinsed throughout the entire inner surface. Place the waste bucket under the tip of the barrette and drain the sodium hydroxide solution. Repeat this step about one more time to ensure that the barrette is coated with sodium hydroxide solution and that there are no air bubbles. Fill the barrette and drain until the meniscus is between the 0 to 3 milliliter mark. Record the initial volume. If it is hard to see the initial volume, place a sheet of white paper behind the meniscus to get a better read. The next step is to obtain about 1.5 grams of potassium hydrogen thylate, or KHP. Use a spatula and put the KHP in small amounts on weighing the weighing paper on the balance scale, and record the mass of the KHP used. This is important. Pour your KHP and about 40 milliliters of deionized water into a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. The Erlenmeyer flask allows you to swirl the solution around and reduce spills unlike a beaker would. Therefore, swirl around gently or use a stirring rod until KHP has dissolved. Next, add 3 drops of phenolphthalein solution into the KHP solution and put it under the barrette. The barrette should be a little bit under the flask. This allows more room to swirl the flask gently without hitting the edges of the flask when the sodium hydroxide, or NaOH, solution is added. The next step, you will need to have a lot of patience and hand coordination. Slowly with one hand, turn the stopcock to open the passes to allow the NaOH solution to drop slowly into the flask, drop by drop. Do not just open the stopcock to release the NaOH as if you were draining, because you don't know at what volume your solution will hit to reach an endpoint. It is okay in the beginning because it's too early for the KHP solution to reach its endpoint. When the NaOH solution is dropped into the KPH solution, it should disappear quickly in the beginning. When you notice the magenta color lasting a bit longer, that is when you should adjust your stopcock and slow down by adding only one drop at a time. Your other hand will be slowly swirling the flask around to get rid of the titrant. 
As the titration continues, each drop should leave a magenta pink residue in the flask that should go away when swirling. It is because of the phenylthylene is an indicator, it, takes, it shows the change in the color of the liquid based on its pH level. In this experiment, the phenylthylene helps the KHP become slightly basic, therefore the solution turns slightly pink. When you approach the end of titration, the pink color will last longer before the solution becomes colorless again. The reason why you are using a white tile is to see the color change easier since the ring stand has a gray base. Stop the titrant when the solution is slightly pink. If the pink color does not disappear after 30 seconds of additional swirling, you have reached the end point of titration. If you get a dark pink color, a magenta, then you have gone too far and overshot it. Record your final volume of the barrette to the nearest 0.01 milliliters and pour your titration mixture into the waste bucket. Clean the Aramayer flask and reset the trials two more times. Refill your barrette after each finished trial. Discard your finished titration into the non halogen waste container. The second part of the experiment is using a vinegar sample that contains about 5% acidic acid in water with your NaOH solution. This helps determine the exact acid content. You will need a clean 25 milliliter volumetric pipette for this part. Pipette 25 milliliters of vinegar solution into your clean 125 milliliter Aramayer flask and add three drops of phenylthylene solution into the vinegar solution. Your barrette should already be filled with your NaOH solution. Record your initial volume. After the solution has been titrated, like you did for part one, record your final volume of NaOH. Repeat this part two more times and discard your finished titration into the non halogenic waste container. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helped.